Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In my previous video I discussed a somewhat lightened space shuttle, the Dauntless Shuttle, and tested its capabilities to orbit and its re-entry. And in the comments to that video, people speculated about the 5 segment booster from SLS being used on the space shuttle, or perhaps liquid fuel boosters. And in general I wasn't enthusiastic about any such thing in order to increase the capacity of the shuttle. but. Liquid fuel boosters, there is one option that I guess I can approve of, and uh, you may have guessed it. Yes, the Orion carrier plane, <laughs> of course. Two Orion carrier planes, in fact. Uh, they are humongous. After all, they themselves carry basically a space shuttle on their backs in their normal scheme of things, the Orion 3. And yeah, well, uh, basically, if you want to think about them this way, they're just boosters with nine Raptor engines on their tails. That is what they are. But they are filled with a lot of methane and oxygen. The stack is more than 1,300 tons heavier than the normal shuttle stack because, well, they can lift more fuel. Uh, actually, it does provide more thrust, but it would have to. Uh, but they, uh, as a result, lift more fuel. We do actually have a lower thrust to weight ratio than normal for the shuttle stack because they have so much fuel. They have a burn time of more than three minutes compared to the two minutes of the SRBs. And of course they're more efficient. So the question is, what can we get out of this? Uh, in theory, these are recoverable if it launches from the right place and we have a runway down range. Uh, but we will launch from Cape Canaveral and I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna test recovery. We might see what happens with them and where they end up. Uh, in the normal scheme of things, and maybe that'll give us an idea where we would have to put a runway. But right now, this is mainly a capacity test. And here, the three minute burn time is sort of critical. If they only had a two minute burn time, the shuttle would then be overburdened with a extra heavy payload, right? That if it's got more than its normal 25, let's say 30 tons, we tested with 31 tons, but let's say it's much heavier here. Well, then it's gonna have a lower thrust to weight ratio and be in trouble. Already with its normal OMS fuel you can see it doesn't get much delta V once it is, it is in orbit and that is because we have a 100 ton payload in the cargo bay. That is what we're going to test with 100 tons. Now is it reasonable to think that this can carry 100 tons? I don't know but I mean it, uh, we, we can think about it this way. We have removed two boosters that used to be 1,000 tons or half the, the mass of the stack basically and we have placed two space planes that are each 1,000 tons. So we've doubled the booster capacity and they are more efficient boosters. Meanwhile, the original stack actually carried the entire shuttle to orbit after all. And the payload plus the shuttle was about 110 tons, let's say. And so now we're saying, well, considering we've increased the stack by more than 1,000 tons or more than 50%, uh, and we've got more efficient fuel being used, we could potentially double the payload. So that is the question. Can we do it? And with that intro, let's find out. Well, obviously the launch platform was not made for this. You'll note that I'm not using the Dauntless shuttle because I really want to see how a regular space shuttle would have done. But yeah, our... Orion carrier planes are sort of clipping into the platform, but there's no collider on the platform, so it's not a problem. So, I mean, obviously, it was not built for this, but uh, it's trying. So, uh, I have a slightly modified launch script, but we're going to have to see if we need to shut down some of the other engines on the carrier plane in order to maintain balance. The SRBs have a thrust curve, after all, in order to maintain the balance. Uh, we might just want to shut down some engines on the carrier planes in order to do that. But I've cooked up a alternate launch script. Uh, not Orion. Shuttle... Orion C, I think it was. There we go. Alright. And it'll be in the hands of KOS, and we'll see how that works. If I need some more tweaking, who knows? I mean, probably because there's a lot to be tested out here. We can see quite a lot of... Uh, I, 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 the, I feel like the sort of sidestep is going a different way, the drift. We've got the APU on, and it is rolling. 
Now this, this is serious. This is serious looking stuff right here. Okay, we have completed the roll. We're just going to 26.6 uh, degrees straight out. Nothing fancy at all. And right now we're using half of our pitch authority to maintain balance. There is also the matter of what happens as the external tank uh, reduces its fuel and we get close to orbit where the fact that we have such a heavy payload in the shuttle is going to unbalance things. By the way, since it sort of came up in the comments in a previous video, I'll have to note there is a reason why the oxygen tank is high up on the external tank. Without that, once the boosters are off, the shuttle cannot maintain balance. Uh, it is necessary for the center of mass to be high up in the stack for the shell engines to point through that center of mass the oxygen tank does have to be on top. There was a configuration with the oxygen tank on the bottom that somebody suggested, but that would be a bad idea. As soon as the boosters go off, that thing is going to flip out. The hydrogen tank is really, really light. One of the sort of details, one of the reasons why SLS's tank had to be redone is because if you actually put the thrust at the bottom of the external tank, the entire hydrogen tank needs to be reinforced. It's actually a super light tank and it's just hanging off of the intertank here. All the thrust is going through the intertank. You know, all the attachments. Of course we've got our decoupler back here, but really it would be attached here to the intertank. The thrust of the engines, by the way, is not so much more than the SRBs provided that it would cause a problem, but so that's not an issue. But yeah, all the thrust is going through the intertank. So the hydrogen tank could be really, really light. It just really needed to be able to contain the fuel instead of bearing any of the stresses and loads of the launch. And SLS's tank has to be much heavier because it does bear the thrust at the bottom. Much heavier, in fact. And the same was true of the Energia stack with the engines at the bottom. And I've made the case that actually Buran would have been able to carry much more payload than it did it conceivably could have if the engines, the main engines, were actually on Buran. Uh oh, here we go. Uh oh, I might have done that too late. Oh, they're going off. And. Oh no! Um. Okay, well, we, we lost an Elevon. Um. And those things did not go off particularly well, did they? Uh, yeah. We'll need to put more Separatrons. That decoupler is overheating for some reason, which is interesting. I think we'll just continue with this and see if it can bear the load. And actually get to orbit right now. We lost Nelevon, so it's a little bit lighter. <laughs> but, uh, I think we can still see if it can carry the 100 tons like this. Obviously the carrier planes shut off their engines so that they would have some fuel left over for maneuvering and return. They're much lower down than they would be on the normal launch out of Brownsville in the two Mars and Beyond series. They're not going to get as far. There's no way we could launch the shuttle from Brownsville and expect that to work out for the carrier planes. Okay, we are rolling over. This maneuver is also a little bit more interesting because of the heavier shuttle side, so just wanted to see that it goes well. We're pretty close on the Delta Vs, so it's tough to say right now. It might not get 100 tons. Even if it does get 100 tons, because of the low Delta V available in the OMS system, uh, we might be in some trouble once we get to orbit in placing the payload where it needs to go. We probably need a supplementary OMS pack, some extra fuel for the orbital maneuvering system if we're gonna carry a payload like this. Well, as I was saying before things went awry, the Buran could have carried more payload if it was carrying the main engines. People think that moving the main engines off of Buran and to the external tank or the main tank of Energia 
uh, meant that Baran could carry more. No, actually it carries less like that because that required the hydrogen tank of Energia to be much strengthened and actually the total external tank mass for Energia is more than 40 tons heavier than this or more than double the mass of the shuttle external tank and it's about the same as the mass of the SLS main tank I mean main stack main core the reason why Baran could carry more is because First of all, I had a more efficient OMS system, the kerosene oxygen or syntin oxygen uh, RD58 variant, and also the boosters were kerosene oxygen, so they were more efficient, and there were four engines on the core. But even so, I mean, it, it just was never meant for Buran. The Energia stack was meant to be a standalone launch system, and it just had Buran hanging off of it. Buran was not the most efficient payload for the system and yeah it just wasn't optimized as a shuttle it was optimized as a standalone launch system and it just happened to have Varan on it so we can see all the pitch authority we're using because we've got this heavier load here and the only thing saving right now is that the oxygen tank is up here and bringing the center of mass at least a little bit higher because it's higher up in the stack but uh, it might be better if our payload was actually in the front of the bay instead of the back of the bay. You can see we're really pushing it here. And we're probably gonna go out of whack. I'll try and turn on the RCS to help it out. Uh, here we go. Just a little bit off. And we didn't really have enough. So 100 tons is probably going too far with this. Unless we have some additional stuff going on. Okay, well, I am going to do some fixes. And that is with the Elevon lost. <laughs> so uh, it was ambitious. It was ambitious to try for a 100 ton payload. Uh, it might be better if we put it up front. I also have the docking port mechanism thing. Let me just attach this up here. But and we'll have to make sure that that's not clipping the bottom of the bay too. But, okay, and we will reduce it. We'll say 90 tons. Okay, so I've added more separatrons to the boosters. I'll try not to dock so much while it launches so that I can turn off the engines at the proper time and we have a lighter payload so run shuttle Orion C I have not changed the script at all because we don't know the proper time for shutting down some of the engines on here I'll do it just as soon as it's convenient for uh, as far as g-forces are concerned okay I think I'll... well, I mean, I'll wait a little bit. Our pitch is sort of getting there, though. I might have to adjust the time when the script stages off the, the carrier planes. Okay, turning off some engines. That didn't have as much of a positive effect as I was hoping, actually. But because the script has got to stage off the carrier planes at three minutes anyway, it'll probably keep the balance long enough to do that. Or three minutes after launch, I should say. There we go. Okay, they're off cleanly this time. Without some control, they'll eventually rip apart, though. Aerodynamics is aerodynamics. They have to be oriented properly when they hit the thicker parts of the atmosphere but we'll take care of that later <laughs> for now we'll continue with this since we haven't managed to bring this to orbit successfully yet it's still gonna be pretty tight here taking a look at how much delta V we have left and what our orbital velocity is okay here we go again close to orbit using a lot of pitch authority I'll turn on RCS right now I don't know if it'll help or whether it's just going to consume a whole lot of OMS fuel. Uh, 
well we can see it's gone awry. Okay. Well. Okay, separation. And... Moving away from the external tank. Activating the OMS engines and coasting. We're gonna need extra to make orbit though. Oh, we need to turn off the engines there. Unless they use all our fuel cell fuel. Okay, ignition. Uh, we're coming up from a very low periapsis with a very heavy payload, so we'll see how it does. Again, this could all benefit from extra fuel in here. They were... I think they had some sort of plan to do that, just in case they felt that it was necessary, but they never did actually make those units. Extra OMS fuel units. I'm going to try and get into a circular-ish 270 kilometer orbit and then if we have 200 meters per second left uh, after we release the payload I'll say that that's probably enough to do re-entry and return and I'm not going to actually test it out explicitly since that I've done plenty of times. What I'd like to do is see where the Orion carrier planes end up. All right, well, that's the equivalent of 270 circular. We're not quite right there, but it averages out. So I'll take it. Let's see what we've got. Decouple. Whoa, that went out really quickly. Okay, so in fact, it went out so quickly that it knocked our apoapsis up. But um, uh, clearly, this is not the best. I, I think it was probably clipped into the bottom of the base still a little bit. But uh, yeah, we've got 247 meters per second, which will be enough to get back. No problems. And yeah, so I'll just say that that is clearly possible. 90 tons with a bit of a stretch there. We'll probably have to fine tune the launch script to take into account the situation. But let's see what happens with the carrier planes if we follow one down. Okay, here we go again. And who knows, maybe this is the last time you'll see this sort of thing. You know, if uh, we made a triangular tank, that would be m a much better fit, but obviously that would probably be more expensive and uh, finicky, and also we would be still disposing of it, so that's all lost money to make that, but it'd still be nice to have a triangular tank to fit this sort of scheme. I might have to think about that. Uh, if there's a way to recover it, maybe. But a tank is just a tank. I don't know how much the external tanks actually cost. I think maybe it should launch a little bit steeper. I haven't actually changed the thrust weight ratios in the launch script. Uh, since we have a lower thrust weight ratio, which we should probably have it launch steeper. It might be better off that way. Okay, we have separation. Let us... We didn't even need to turn off the boosters this time. All right, let me try and get it situated. This is going to be tough though. Even at the best of times, it doesn't like to... It doesn't like the situation in the atmosphere very much. Oh, no, it's doing a little bit better. Let me make sure it's controlling from here. We've got some Delta V, but not enough to actually boost back or anything. I don't think there's anything out here for us to actually land at. Bermuda is somewhere, but it's not anywhere convenient. But we'll get a sense of how far, how far away from the cape we end up. This definitely cannot survive a water landing. We've tried that before. Not intentionally. Jet engines could be an option. If we fit it with jet engines, we might be able to make it back. I might try another video with this stuff after I make some tweaks and fit the jet engines. 
We've got those methane burning jets. So we can try that out. Okay, here we go with the G-forces. This should be somewhat milder than the usual, hopefully. Well, the other one's blowing up. Again, you have to get it right. If I pitched up more than this, it wouldn't work. If it was any other attitude, it wouldn't work. It's a delicate sort of situation. We've bounced up. I have no idea whether... I don't think it has enough control to like turn around or anything. But I guess we can try. Oh no, that was not a good thing to do. I went the wrong way on the yaw, I think. Fortunately, we've already got rid of our critical speed. It shouldn't break apart now. Just gonna tumble a whole lot. But I suppose we can try and use some engine power for this. Well, doesn't seem like it's working out very well. Okay. All right, all right. Well, we've got the prograde vector here. Stay there. Stay there. Oh, it's trying to flat spin again. Uh, anyway, it's not like this can land anywhere safely. Okay, well, I wouldn't call it safe, but it's it's not plunging into the water. It's just going to fail miserably when it hits the water. Okay, no. Nope. Weird stall recovery complete, but yeah, well, that's the system. Uh, we'll have to refine it a little bit. I think maybe we should pull it down below 90 tons, but maybe we can do 90 tons if we optimize the, the trajectory a little bit better. And where are we? We're out here. Um, so, yeah, launching from Brownsville, we wouldn't get anywhere. Um, and again, if we were launching up the coast, like on an ISS trajectory, we would probably not have any location either. So... It's an interesting question what two sites would be about that far apart, or I could just put a runway somewhere. Uh... Oh, it actually survived. We've, we've had it fail before. This time it just sort of stuck in the water like that. Alright, well, it's a happy little beach whale, but anyway. Is it sinking? Or is it just uh, holding a negative one? I think it's just holding a negative one. All right. Well, I guess we can recover this. No, I'm going to revert that whole business. So that is the shuttle with the Orion carrier planes as boosters. And so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.